So old field habitats are not only important to galls, but many other species as well. Old field habitats typically refers to former fields that were once maintained and are oftentimes farmland or pastures and then eventually make stops and they start their progress back into a forest. Old fields are typically characterized by herbs and grasses as well as other types of shrubbery as well as goldenrods. Typically there is very little trees because there is very little moisture, there is less wind blockage, and that results in a very stressful habitat for most plant species. So what are goldenrods? Well, goldenrods are a member of the aster family and consist of about 110 different species. They are a perennial herbaceous species that is found in meadows, old fields, and roadsides. They typically have a yellow flower, and they are strong competitors in the plant world because they can suppress the growth of competing plants using allelochemicals. Due to their abundance, they are typically very attractive for herbivores. So the galls we will be looking for today are apple galls or ball galls that are kind of like a ping pong ball or maybe even an apple. They're very spherical and they're either golden, brownish, or a little bit red in color. Now apple galls form from the goldenrod gall fly, which burrows into the goldenrod stem and then lays its eggs inside. After about 10 days, this egg will hatch and the larva will eat its way deeper into the stem to create a feeding chamber. The goldenrod will then create a gall, which forms even more space and more nutrition for the larva to feed off of. The larva will stay in the gall over winter, where it will slowly turn into a more mature fly. And during this time, it will slow its metabolism, replace its internal water with glycerol, which helps it prevent from freezing, and will die a pause until spring. And then it will be stimulated to eat a narrow passageway out from the central chamber. It'll wait until it's completely evolved and then emerge from the gall as a full adult fly. Like some adult insects, like butterflies and moss, the, a goldenrod gall adult does not eat and only lives to uh, reproduce. Now, often galls do not cause any major growth or reproductive cost to the plant. However, when golden rods are young, or if there are too many galls that decide to live inside of it, it can be problematic for the golden rod. Since galls are very common in old field systems and meadows, and because they are stationary and attached to a plant, they are often very easily targeted by parasites and parasitoids. They are also predated by generalist birds. Downy woodpeckers are a generalist bird that will predate on galls since they can easily drill through the wood and extract the larvae. And parasitoid wasps are another predator and they will penetrate the gall and lay eggs inside of it. These wasp larvae will then hatch and consume the gall fly larvae as well as the gall and then emerge in the spring. And since galls are formed by both the fly larvae and the goldenrod plant itself, the size of the galls can vary widely. So since selection pressure can change depending on habitat and natural selection, acts when heritable traits impact survivorship and reproduction of individuals is their selection for gall sizes. In environments that favor one type of predation over another, such as birds or wasps, we can think that there will be selection pressure affecting gall sizes. So exploitative interactions like the galls and the birds and the wasps can cause very interesting selections in species all over the world, since there is an often back and forth or coevolution between predator and prey. This can be shown as super venomous ants or lizards shooting blood from their eyes. And there's a YouTube link at the bottom of the video if you want to see that as well. And while you've certainly heard about natural selection before from classes and textbooks, there are many ways in which it can and does happen all around you. And I know we don't have a lot of tarantulas here, but in this image you can see tarantulas and that they carry up to a thousand of their young. And the tarantulas that manage to escape predation, starvation, disease will then pass on their genetics to the next generation 
and this will continue onwards influencing how that species of tarantula becomes better adapted for its environment.